scissor in here with my first Volson build guide. So, um, yeah, this is my first attempt at a Volson build guide. It's a uh, game that I've been playing quite a bit now. I've Actually, let's see how much I've been playing. Uh, 33 hours. And just for emphasis, I was sponsored to play four hours of this game. Obviously, the other 29 hours is just uh, because I wanted to have fun. Which is apparently difficult in the current year. But anyway. So um, the build currently is basically a Winter's Grasp build. So sort of like an Ice Nova from other games. Um, and uh, it started with just being a utility skill I used. Now it's like the full thing, but I, I want to walk you through everything and like the leveling process. I've tried recording like the entire point for point leveling process, similar to how I make my Path of Exile build guide. So it's not like, so you don't get lost. And uh, I tried to do it slightly slowly too. So I hover over the nodes a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah, as you can see, like we, we go straight for like the wild card. So we're going for crit early on. And uh, the skills I used while leveling was very, very different. But uh, I want to walk over the notes a little bit first. So yeah, first wild card. Then we did um, residual energy. And that's because we're a hybrid build. We're attacking and casting during the leveling process. I found that that was very good because it wasn't that easy for me to make sure that I only had willpower or that I only had rage. So I was like, yeah, well, let's be hybrid. I'll use cyclone or bladestorm. Um to use my rage and then I'll use like other spells to kill things. So yeah, Warlock, Residual Energy, and then we took the duty to exterminate and like some extra willpower. Uh, again, we're still a crit build, so we took Raining, Raining in the Darkness, which is 100% uh, increased spell crit if you're above 75% willpower. And since I was using Cyclone, you know, it was pretty easy to stay above 75. Um, then I went for Intravenous Neural Cord. So uh, again, more crit. Then we went on the other side over to Backline Raider, get some more attack speed. Don't know how useful that actually is. Because, you know, I'm new to the game, but we're playing around with it. Might not be worth picking up. I don't have it in my endgame build. Um, after that, we went up to Clandestine Execution. Uh, then, which time can I heal? And here comes into play the Stasis mechanic. And uh, this works on the um, Infinity Blades and the Anomaly. And it basically means that when you inflict stasis, they take 100% of the damage after 1.5 second delay. So that means that it's very high boss stacking damage. Not really going to help you out much on single target. After that as well, we started going for more ailment stacks. And uh, then we went for uh, more, more ailment things in the Cabalist area. And I'll explain some of that in the start. But... Um, I can, I can go in-game here and show some runes and stuff that I was doing. Here's the in-game. This is my, like, current character. So this skill tree is uh, our in-game one. Uh, this is our in-game one, not the one I used for leveling. So the one, like, point for point was the one I showed for leveling. And then I respect later for 1500 or something, I think it is. Um, you can see I don't have the attack speed stuff. I don't have any of that. And then we've gone up here. This is just to get willpower cost reduction because now we're using a staff. Whereas early on during the link process, we were using a catalyst and a sword. And then instead of Aether Jump, I had Blade Storm. Um, so for the leveling process, I can talk a little bit about the Blade Storm notables I used. Um, I didn't really enjoy using it much until that one came into play. Can be held to prolong the duration of the skill. And that basically means that your Cyclone will actually like keep spinning, um, which is great. Um, you know, I probably, like, it, I didn't use this much anyway. I probably had some, like, rage generation, reduced rage cost, critical damage. Health clubs are actually really nice because I usually use this while, like, for mobility. So getting extra health clubs was really good for boss fights and stuff. You know, a lot of people struggle on the Act 1, 2, and 3 boss fights. Um, and then here, crit chance when an enemy is killed by Bladestorm. So there's some synergy here because this is your global crit chance. So I tried to make a lot of synergy between the different skills. Um, and then, let's see. This one, I just did a lot of like cooldown reduction. And we'll, we'll talk more about the final setup for that later. Because this is the endgame skill. Um, Anomaly, this was really great for leveling. Um, obviously, early on, you don't have access to all of them. So I found this one really good. Projectiles are destroyed by the area of effect. That was really nice for some boss fights. 
and just felt really safe inside the anomaly while moving because only melee could hit me um and yeah just like damage damage duration projectiles uh chance to inflict ailments that doesn't matter early on because you're not really doing much ailments then crit chance and then this one's really good two vortexes uh, and then more crit hit damage i don't really use anomaly right now honestly right now my build is basically the the aether jump the heal and so i'm using three slots right now i should probably ditch anomaly and infinity blades in my end game build but right now and you'll see why there's not really a need to use more than basically two abilities all right so for infinity blades um willpower these two are very important willpower from critical hits and willpower each time an enemy is killed and uh, that helped me be able to use it more and honestly the only reason i was using infinity blades is it's so cool looking it looks like templar assassin from dota or like a proto zealot from starcraft and it was just so fun so I had a lot of fun using that, and that's the main reason I've seen. Uh, this one was pretty nice. An additional attack hits behind you sometimes. Increased damage for each ailment. Um, this one's huge, actually. This is like a big buff. Let's see. So it's like 300 average damage. Um, and good for party play, too. And then a debuff that increases damage taking my spells. So, you know, if I've hit them and then do anomaly or if I've hit them. This, this is a spell, so it increases its own damage. Uh, increased damage. And that's pretty much all the ones I took there. Um, this one is very strong for single target. Because I did use this until like level 62 or 63. I actually was Infinity Blades. Even though obviously it's a very limited clearing ability. It was very, very nice for single target. And you can see it in one of the videos too. Like I, I recorded a video of me clearing him up with the build. Um, and basically, I would throw down two anomalies. That helps stack stasis. And then stop around with this. And then it would be taking a lot of damage. You see, it's a very, very, very ramp up thing. So it'll go like slowly and the bra down. Um, Bulwark of Dawn, probably the most broken skill in the game. Uh, especially once you get air of effect deals damage. Then other than that, I just didn't duration i think a health regen for tick two and i felt very immortal standing inside the circle uh reduce cooldown ink duration this one's amazing it becomes like a righteous fire effect that heals you and follows you around and does damage it's insane um and then i just took resistances at the end there but uh it kills monsters on its own and it's extremely strong and uh yeah it lasts longer than the cooldown so i could technically just run with this up all the time and uh, yeah, it keeps me pretty much chopped up full. I think I want to change my gear around and make it like full resistances instead. Um, and I can go over my gear a little bit because now I want to get into my actual build. Because does anyone like Frozen? Let me turn on sound for this because I didn't want in game sounds in the recording. But uh, let me turn on sounds for this. So, when I was talking to the developers in a voice call, they were answering questions from stream. And uh, I asked them if there's any hard cap on things like cooldown reduction, movement speed, or crit. And there's not. There's no caps on anything. They said this might change in the future in case it's too overpowered. Well, it is. Um, so, part of the reason why this is exceptionally strong is because of this node. Leaves a damaging area on the ground for a few seconds. Well, each each of those damaging areas stacks. So you're getting the initial hit, and then each one of these like 100 or whatever ice nodes that we're putting down are also putting down sort of degen. That's not a degen. It still counts as an initial hit from all I can tell. That's just ticking all over and over again. So you're just like barraging them with hits. And it's it's crazy. So far, like I haven't like delved too far into the game, but I'm at like a little 85 right now. And it's just like... Um, I recorded a video that will show in the background as well of me doing like a fully juiced 85 map. And, and I also did the, you know, whatever they're called, like the, um, extra special monsters that have like the walking, not like walking dead, the left for dead mechanic where they like attack you and like skewer you. I did those, they insta die. And even bosses too, like if a mob doesn't have unstoppable, it is screwed by the way, because currently... We're using Winter's Grasp as a pull. We can actually increase the damage quite a lot. Uh, 
But uh, right now we're using his cold, so it's freezing everything. It's very safe. Like, I don't have any defenses at all. I'm basically a glass cannon running around freezing everything. Unstoppable monsters. I try to just, like, run around them in a circle. Um, and uh, that's usually fine. I do die sometimes. Like, the big, like, robot thing, that just stomps me sometimes when it's unstoppable. And there's, like, this big lizard dragon thing that hurts, too. But, uh, yeah, very, very strong build. So... Quite enjoying that. It was a lot of fun. And I want to talk a little bit about the gear because that is important for this. So I have cooldown reduction on um, my pants. I have cooldown reduction on my helmet. I have cooldown reduction on my chest. Uh, I also have as much transfer time reduction as I can. You can see that the, um, the willpower is like coming back very quickly while draining. And that seems to be affected quite a lot by that. Again, there might be some things in this video that I am simply wrong about because I don't have 19,000 hours in this game. I only have 30. So work with me on this one. Um, and uh, yeah, let's see. So yeah, and oh, and I've been trying to stack as much rage and willpower cost reduction as I can. I was trying resource generation for a while, but that turns to be uh, your regen and not so much things like... I was hoping this worked. Willpower on hit. It doesn't. Because obviously we would be full willpower all the time. That's only when you're actually hitting. With your staff. Um, yeah, I got this one as well. Reduce spell, spell cost reduction and transfer time. I kind of want to, I don't know how high the roll is, but I want to get like a, if I get up to 18 or 20 spell cost reduction with a transfer time window, that would be pretty good. If not, I'm probably going to try to get a second one with just a cost reduction. Um, cost reduction on pretty much everything. And our Nova is down to only costing 39 willpower. Um, I have been thinking about getting more willpower again for the next levels. I just took uh, that one, which we'll talk about in a sec, because that's part of our actual defense now. Um, but yeah, other than that, fairly like standard gear. I'm trying out this magic fine belt. I don't know if it like really does anything. More transfer time reduction and cooldown. Um, movement speed is pretty important for this build. I want to have higher movement speed boots. And uh, this doesn't actually cast properly while standing still because then it has a cast animation but they made winter's grasp able to cast while moving um and then it doesn't have a cast animation which is part of why this build works so if they remove that this is sort of similar to how you know like flame dash and stuff in path of exile is instant when casting it um and so is this this is instant while moving so while you're moving is when you can do this so yeah movement speed's nice too my staff Terrible staff. I would like one with a high aether and high spell damage. Sorry, high shadow damage. And then critical hit damage. Um, and then critical hit chance would be nice. And ideally I would want um, the attack 2 sockets. Offensive 2 sockets. Because then I can get more um, damage to spells. So we've done aether damage to spells. Because we want um, stasis to be the second highest ailment. The way this works is it's by whatever does the most damage. So since obviously this is most frost damage, then aether. Very close on lightning. We have way too much lightning. Um, so then it does freeze, then stasis. And it does multiple ailments because of this node. Now, I don't know if this is true yet, but people have told me if I craft amulets using genesis stones, so I like have an amulet with support one, two, or three, and then a genesis stone in it, and then re-roll it, then it can get plus one ailment as a stat. It's pretty rare apparently but if that works then i can get three ailments and uh, the reason that i really want that is i would want freeze uh aether and shadow damage and the reason for that is that shadow applies um uh cursed which is lots of damage taken and uh you can do this currently oh wait i need that node uh let let's just do this to show it off you can currently change it to curse it looks amazing and it's an insane amount of damage this is probably three times more damage like i run in on bosses and i'll do like this and it'll just like brap, instant dead pretty much like you just run around and wait for the um, deedens to kick in and you see the health fighters like Whoop. so that's pretty fun the problem with that is it doesn't freeze and that's our main safety mechanic right now so currently i'm not converting it but that's why if i can get plus one ailment as a max then I can still have the the shadow stasis and freeze. And then we have insane damage and basical immortality to everything that can be frozen. Um, so, yeah. Really enjoying that so far. Um, 
My rings are garbage. Pretty much all my gear is garbage, to be honest. And, um... I just wanted... I saw everybody is running this rend skill. Everybody's running rend or, like, guns with a shield and using this, like, stupid node down here. Um... So I wanted to make like a spellcaster build and see if that works and try to get a end game. And I'm having a lot of fun with it so far. There's downsides to this build though. It has massive memory leak issues. So especially if I'm spamming this a lot, it 100% lines out my client because I found after like 10 maps, I literally had five or 10 frames per second, even while in town, just walking around. So you do have to re-log playing this build. That obviously doesn't matter for leveling. I didn't have any such issues. That's only when spamming the Winter's Cross. I don't even know if this is intended. But from what I can tell, it's just a slightly broken mechanic. Who knows at this point? But it's fun and it looks cool. And I feel like I'm Elsa from Frozen. So, you know, that's interesting. Um, as for the stats and stuff, I pretty much did... I probably had like a hundred points in toughness uh, that I took fairly early on because I was trying to play more like hardcore. I was deleting my characters when I was dying. At some point I was like, eh, just get randomly one shot anyway. This character hasn't fully died except for one time when I was walking around with the railgun and uh, I stood still while explaining and looking at chat and then I died. So unfortunate. A unique chest killed me basically. But yeah, and then the rest of the points I just dump into ferocity. So we have like 50% crit chance plus some like other on the actual spells, 56, 59. So 60% crit chance. And um, yeah. Oh, and the one thing I almost forgot to mention, I've started taking tenant points now. So this is, you gain a tenant point, uh, one every 2.5 seconds, that, that are these. So I have five tenant points. And what they do is they do a 15% damage reduction, but this one does five. So it's a 100% damage reduction when I have um, five tenant points. So for if I take one big hit, that hit is not going to damage me. Obviously, we're freezing a lot with this build, so I don't really get hit a lot. Um, so I'm usually, from what I can tell, running with five tenant points up all the time. Um, and they sometimes go down, but then I take very little damage. So it seems like an all-around very strong build. I don't know if it's going to get nerfed or anything. I don't know if it's going to, like, stagnate at some point. But so far, we're in 85 rifts or whatever you want to call them. And, yeah, they're going pretty great. So I just wanted to make a build guide for those of you who want to play something else than what everybody else is playing. Because I haven't seen many people play this, and it's hella fun. So, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. This is my first attempt at a Wilson build guide. Thanks for watching, and try to die less than I do.